So there's some subtleties I want to show from this example I may or may not have noticed. First of all, magic number here, I less than 8. That'll work great on my processor, or my computer, but not necessarily maybe on yours and somebody else's. There could be more powerful or less powerful boxes. I want this number to be based off the number of processors for the current machine I'm on. Well, the, sure enough, I can query that. I can say environment dot processor count. Okay, and if I hit, hit F10 here and hover over here with the debugger, you see on my machine it's still 8 because I'm a quad-core hyper-thread machine. So anyway, that's that's a nice little little subtlety there. And then I also want you to notice, um, I'm going to say console right line leaving main. Okay, and uh, I'm actually, let's say, well, I don't know if that's actually going to work because if I control F5 that... We're just going to see all the output. And, and believe me, leaving main already printed, it's long gone. I'm going to control C this one. Put a breakpoint here. Uh, hit F5, you'll notice. Here we go. That's that's a little bit better output. So the, some of the threads already started up. They're printing out their thread IDs. We passed them. And then here we go. We're leaving main. And you can see on the debugger, we're on that last curly there. So in theory, when I hit F5 and tell this, this uh, application to keep going then the black console window should disappear with it. But such is not the case because I have created eight of the threads of my own that are in the back just cranking away stuck in a wall true loop. So these loops are actually considered foreground threads or important threads. Basically the program, the entire process, that's a good term for it, the operating system process, will not terminate until all foreground threads have terminated. Right, which obviously these will not terminate. So I'm going to hit Control C on that. Uh, let's go back here. I'm going to say thread dot is background. I'm going to say that's true, meaning hey, this thread's not really important. If the main thread goes out, go ahead and feel free to terminate this thread. The, this thread that I've created here, and we'll talk about termination and how we get out of threads. But let's uh, run this again. Control F5. You see that was very short. We got some output, but then in the end we said leaving main, and then once main left, that was the end of that. All those other threads got shut down. So that's foreground threads versus background threads. I also want to point out this thread idea I pass in. It's going to go from 0 to 7 on my machine because 7 is less than 8. Uh, I didn't necessarily need to pass this in. I could have very well said thread dot, here's a static property, managed... Come on, until he sense. Thread dot, oh, what is wrong? Thread dot, oh, thread dot current thread, that's right. Thread dot current thread, that gives you the thread object for the thread that is currently executing in this method. Know that, notice we send eight threads into this method at the same time. Current thread dot uh, managed thread ID. And the reason we put managed on here is that basically, there's CLR threads, which, right, for now, to my understanding, they run directly on top of Windows threads. Windows threads, they also have IDs, but the numbers are not as user-friendly as managed thread ID. So if you want to query managed thread ID, I think we get a little bit better numbers. Oh, yeah, same as what we have here. In fact, just for fun, here in main, I'm going to, oops, call it right line. Let's figure out the managed thread ID from the main thread. So thread dot current thread dot Manage thread ID, uh, F10, I'm just going to use the debugger for this. You see the managed thread ID is 10. Where that number comes from, uh, I, I don't know, I don't really care. Um, it is a little bit more user friendly uh, than maybe 3289, but each thread, uh, what I do care about is that each thread will have a unique man managed thread ID. Not that I really rely on these thread IDs, but it does help with debugging that we'll see in a future video.